by combining the simple concepts of intersecting veins with the familiar geometry of the torus, we arrive at a new expander technology which enables the economical recovery of power from waste steam. Join me as we delve into the principles of how this remarkable new device operates. The simple concept of intersecting veins allows us to create a positive displacement steam expander. That is, an expander that harnesses the energy and pressurized steam through a change in volume. The veins travel through a common intersection. The red veins, called the primary veins, travel from right to left. And the blue veins, called the secondary veins, travel from bottom to top. As they do so, they create a cyclic stream of expanding chambers. The pressurized steam enters the expansion chamber through an inlet port, while the volume is still small, and begins to push the red vein to the left, using the blue vein as something to push against. The next red vein enters the intersection and closes off the inlet port and allows the steam to undergo the remainder of its expansion as the volume continues to grow. Once the volume has reached its maximum, the steam, now with low pressure, is allowed to exit. And here we can observe how the process looks under motion. High pressure steam enters the expansion chamber through the inlet port as the volume of the expansion chamber increases. The steam is admitted until the next red vein closes off the inlet port. At this point, the steam undergoes a complete expansion as the volume of the expansion chamber increases. Now the steam is at lower pressure and ex exits the expansion chamber, while at the same time, a new charge of high pressure steam enters the next expansion chamber. This continuous input of pressurized steam is what powers the expander. To recap our understanding of the concept of intersecting veins, the spaces between the primary veins create expansion chambers as the veins travel from right to left. The secondary veins are used as abutments for the expansion chamber and travel from bottom to top. The veins provide timing for opening and closing of inlet and discharge ports, and there are no valves. All of the veins move in a continuous direction. Intersecting veins provide an interesting concept for a positive displacement expander. But what is needed next is a geometry that would allow the veins to continuously rotate it turns out there is just such a geometry, the torus. We will utilize the space on the inside of the torus for the blue veins, and the space on the outside of the torus for the red veins. As you can see, we've taken the intersecting veins from the linear world and wrapped them into the toroidal world where they're now able to rotate. By carefully designing the shapes and placement of the veins, it is possible to create an expander that accomplishes several goals. We have made a positive displacement expander that operates with only two moving parts. Each part spins concentrically and continuously. The toroidal geometry allows for very robust construction and operates quietly. The expander can operate with two phase fluids if needed and uses ports instead of valves. It is self-starting and is oil-free. We have covered the concept of intersecting veins, and when combined with the geometry of the torus, we get the toroidal intersecting vein machine. To give you an idea of how the machine operates, we have created a rapid prototype with a transparent cover.
As I rotate the ring of red veins, you can see the ring of blue veins rotate as well. The red veins drive the blue veins directly, and therefore there are truly only two moving parts. The high pressure steam enters through the inlet port and is expanded in the expansion chambers and is then exhausted through the exhaust port. The blue veins of the rapid prototype are now represented with an actual secondary rotor from a working toroidal intersecting vein machine. Around the secondary rotor are a group of primary veins, which would be the red veins. Here we have a tibum with its front cover removed, and inside we can see the secondary rotor and the primary veins. As the primary veins rotate, they drive the secondary rotor directly, and there really are only two moving parts. This computer animation shows how all of the components of the TIVM are fit together. The output shaft of the TIVM can be used to drive mechanical equipment such as compressors or pumps, and it can drive a generator to create electricity. Now, we get a chance to peer inside the TIVM. As the animation shows, the volume of each successive expansion chamber grows from small to large. The high-pressure steam, in red, enters through the inlet port and expands with the growing volume of each expansion chamber. As the steam expands to a lower pressure in one chamber, a new charge of high-pressure steam is entering the following chamber. This is what allows the TIVM to be self-started from a dead stop by simply supplying pressurized steam to the inlet port. Here, the TIVM is spinning at 900 RPM and has a dynamometer coupled to its output shaft. The dynamometer is used to simulate a pump or generator and supplies a known load which the TIVM must work against. As the steam control valve located upstream of the TIVM is slowly opened, it allows an increase in steam flow to the TIVM's inlet port, providing more power with which to overcome the resisting load as supplied by the dynamometer. The result is that the TIVM is able to increase its speed, and therefore its power output. The TIVM is shown here operating at 1800 RPM. We at Mechanology hope that you appreciate the elegance of the TIVM and recognize its importance to a world faced with ever-growing demands for energy conservation. For more information, please contact Mechanology at 508-223-1920 or email us at info at com, or visit us on the World Wide Web at www dot mechanology dot com